Hi Stampers, it's Linda Schmidt with Stampin' with the Hounds. Um, today I'm going to show you a fun kind of interactive card um, that uses some thread and beads to make this, what I call the rainfall shaker card. Um, so some of these, uh, this technique does use um, some retired uh, Stampin' Up! products um, and then some non-items like the beads. Um, but it's really, it's, it's, with, it's so much fun to do. I'm not going to lie, it is a little time-consuming card. Um, but the one that I'm going to be featuring today uses our brand new um, suite. Um, it is called the Co Color and Contour uh, Bundle. So it comes with a stamp set, which is a great two-step stamping one. So you've got your outline image and then your um, solid images, plus some fun sayings. And then it has um, the die cut which has this lovely scallop border, and that's what I used um, on my card to make that top and bottom border, so love that. And then it has the outline uh, the images to cut out the flowers, as well as some fun um, scallop frames. And then the paper is really, really pretty um, for spring. It has a bunch of floral, and then on the back side is more of um, your pattern paper, like stripes and polka dots and scallops, and all in the nice, um, subtle um, colors, plus some of the new in colors, like the cinnamon cider, and then the um, it goes with that new evening evergreen, and the um, soft succulent um, kind of coordinates with it as well. So fun paper, and then of course, no, nothing is complete without some fun gems. So these are the little genial gems um, that coordinate with it, and they're super pretty. They've got a little bit of like a crosshatch um, pattern on them and then some glitter. So super fun. And then they have the adhesive on the back, which makes it easy to do. So these are, um, like I said, this is one we're going to be doing today. I wanted to show you some of the other ones that I've done. Um, this is one that I did for my onstage um, virtual swap. This was using our new set called Etched in Nature. And on this one, I actually took the cardstock and stenciled um, the trees in the background, and then I flicked it a little bit with um, some of our um, retired gold shimmer paint. And then I watercolored the bird and kind of cut him out. So that one um, is another kind of fun one. So I used a little bit larger beads on this one to kind of look like the raindrops. And then this one um, I did with the retiring uh, silhouette set. Um, this one I actually did quite a few more strings going across and had them uh, closed in a little bit uh, together. And then on here I had done some retired, um, the rainbow dye that had like the clouds and stuff in there. And this one I did more of a frame going around so you can do that versus just doing a top and bottom um, like I did there. And then my very first one that I um, had ever done this is, uh, I did this one a few years ago. This was using the old cow set, cows are going, um, but I had sponged the kind of the rainbow background and then flicked it with some white crafting to give it that rainfall effect. And then again, on this one, I did the top and the bottom borders with my foam tape, kind of sandwiching those strings in between. So super fun. Um, the ideas are endless on what you can do, but um, like I said, what you'll wanna have is a some foam um so i am just using up i had i don't know where i got this from it was in my it was in my uh, stash but it's a little bit it's a half inch um foam tape double sided if you don't have that i find i like the half inch size you can always take our stampin up foam adhesive sheets and then just cut this so it's at a half an inch and then whatever the width of your card is so these work just as well i'm just going to be using up this because i have it in my stash and i want to use it up and then like i said i've been using um the stampin up this was our metallic thread that we used to um, carry and I had so much of it, so I'm just trying to use it up. So, but really, you just need something that's really fine. Um, I, you could maybe try, I think dental floss might be too thick, but this is a pretty, I don't know what the, it doesn't really say, but I mean, it's, it's pretty fine. So any type of thread um, would work. I just kind of like this little shimmer. And then you'll need like a border. Um, you can also freehand style. You know, cut your whatever your top and bottom is. Um, like I said, I'm going to be doing the scallop um, border on this one, so I kind of cut it at an angle when I did the top one. So, and then um, some stamps, some DSP, or if you want to make your own background, you can do that. Um, I'm going to get started, 
And what I want to do first is I'm going to start showing you how I put on the, the foam tape. So I've already adhered my um, designer series paper onto my card base. Um, so this is four and a quarter or four inches by five and a quarter. And then I'm just going to lay my foam tape on top of that DSP and then just cut it. So you just want it to be the width of your paper. So you can do that at the top and at the bottom. Okay. Then what you'll want to do is you're going to cut your string. So when you're doing this, I have my string be a little bit, um, probably about an inch from the bottom and top longer than what my card length is. And then we're just going to, I like to put my beads in a container. So these um, I purchased at, I don't know, Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but they are, just seeing what the size is. It says 14 plus. I don't know what that means, but I'm not a beater, so, but they're not super tiny. Um, but I guess you can kind of see about there. Not too bad. And then I just take a needle. So what you want to first do is I try and take the thread and adhere it just so it's not moving around when I'm th threading my beads. So I'm just going to anchor the bottom. And this is where also um, you want to make sure your card is always straight so that your thread <laughs> is going and your waterfall lines are going to be going straight. So. I just adhered this. This is kind of a sticky back um, grid paper that I have. And I'm just going to, so it's not going to shift on me. And I'm just going to kind of anchor that down there so it holds it in place. And then the fun part is you just begin threading your beads. And so I like to do probably like five to 10. Um, I kind of alternate um, on the, on each thread. So like this one, I'm going to, I'm going to start with doing the five. Like I said, this is where it gets to be a little time consuming. And then I really need to get my <laughs> my cheaters so I can see see better. So there's two on there. And then let's do three. I need to do this on here so I can skid them out a little bit better. Three, four. And then of course I always find these little beads all over my desk later on. There's five. Let's do a few more. Six. Seven, eight. And six. Yeah, so this card you really want to give to somebody who is a stamper and would appreciate all the hard work put into, into this card design. So there's about 10 beads on that. And then I just want to make sure that I'm laying that down straight. So, and then I'm just going to just kind of press that down. And then you'll do the same thing on your next one. So I'm probably going to end up having about maybe eight strings going across. So I'm just going to pause the video for now. 
and then um, I'll start up again um, so you don't have to painfully watch me thread these beads. So hang tight. Okay, so now I've got all of my um, threads um, have their beads on them. And so as you're moving along and doing this, I always keep like a strip of that um, from my adhesive the backing um, just so that I can keep pressing that down so that I don't lose the tension on my, str my, my strings. So I'm just kind of pressing, pressing, pressing down, just making sure that, that um, those strings are really tight on the, the beads are tight on there. So, and then just kind of test it. That looks good. Now, what I do like to do so that the beads don't stick to that adhesive, um, once I add my other strip of phone tape on top, we'll take a little bit of the embossing buddy and get some of that static electricity. But now that you've got everything strung, what I want to do now is make the border. So we're going to do the top and bottom pieces. So I'm going to set this aside for now. So I have, this is just again um, a four inch um, width uh, side of paper because it has to be the same size as your um, designer series paper or your whatever your pattern paper is that you're doing um, behind there. So that's going to be four inches. And so I'm going to use our little handy dandy stamp and cutter. This thing is so stinking cute. I love it. So since I'm just going to be die cutting, I just need the plate number one and then um, one of my cutting plates. And I always try to keep the one that I've been cutting, I keep that one on the bottom. And then that way, this other one um, doesn't get as warped looking. So, and then I'll switch it out after a while once it starts there. Okay, so now I'm going to take my die, and I just had it. Oh, here it is. So I want to do, for my top one, I kind of liked having it at an angle. So I'm going to just tilt this, my die at an angle. Actually, let's see here. Put this so it, just so that it's cutting it kind of at an angle. And then this is just some little washi tape just to hold that die in place so it doesn't shift around on me. And then I'll just run this through. So there is my top piece and then my bottom piece that one I'm just going to make sure um, that it's just being cut straight across so we'll just line this up make sure I'm somewhat cutting straight let's see we'll do something like that. Just take that down so it's not moving on me. There is my bottom part. So set that aside so I don't lose it. Okay, and then I like to take our blending brush and find my. I'm going to take our blending brushes and I'm just going to sponge the same color ink onto the soft succulent um, cardstock. So I'm just kind of brushing just on the edges just to give it some depth. And then just 
just kind of flicking the edges a little bit. Going back, and then I'll do the same thing on the other one, just kind of blending on that edges. And this part is totally optional. I just think it kind of finishes off the card. And then when you get done, all you need to do is just kind of rinse this underneath the water um, and, it, and let it dry. And then um, and I just kind of brush off some of that excess ink. So I tend to keep like my greens and blues all on one brush and kind of like my pinks and purples on another one. So, all right. And then I also like to do a little bit of splattering. And so what I'm going to do is this is just um, my aqua painter and it just has water in it. And I just got the bristles wet. And then what I'm going to do is just hit with like your bone folder and just kind of hit the um, painter. And then it's going to, as it dries, you'll see the water kind of specks on that cardstock. So I can just do a real quick with my heat gun just to kind of show you. So as it dries, you'll get that white speckled look, which I think kind of complements our rain card. There's that. And then like I said, as it dries, you'll kind of see some more of that speckling. So it's just kind of something fun. Okay, so now we'll go back to our card. And now we're going to add another layer of foam tape on top of this one. So again, this is where you wanna ensure that your strings are all nice and tight. And then you're gonna add that second layer of foam tape on top of the other one. So you're sandwiching that string in between these foam strips. And then same thing, just remove this backing. And then I just kind of shift my beads so they're not smushed up against there when I'm doing my second layer. Okay. And then this is where I now go back with my um, embossing buddy. And I just want to get rid of some of that static electricity along the edge so that my beads don't stick to that foam. So I'm going to do the same thing up here. So now as they go up and down, they shouldn't stick. Okay. So that's all on there. And then before you put these pieces on, this is where you'll want to now trim your string. I got to get my thing off my backing here. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and trim all these strings. looks good. Okay, then you'll remove this top piece and then add your top. Looks like I got a little shimmer spray on here. <laughs> I must have been left over from my aqua painter. We got a little bit of shimmer on this one now. That. And then I already, um, die cut my little flower um, and what I did on this one since the stamp is where'd I go with the stamp set I took this stamp and then I just cut off these other flowers and then die cut my other flower um, on there and then pop that up with a dimensional and then what I did is I wedged 
um, the stem in between two dimensionals because I want a little bit of height so that it doesn't impede with my strings. So before I put my bottom border on, I want to make sure my flower, because I'm going to stick it on this foam strip. So then I'll just wedge that in between so that looks good. So then I'm going to remove this. And then I'll remove my, and again, I've got two dimensionals because I want a little bit more height um, on this flower so that it doesn't get stuck. And then this I'm just going to attach right to the top of my foam, foam strip. And then we'll just kind of wedge this in between. And now you can go ahead and put your bottom part on. And I've got a little bit of string showing here. And then what I did is I kind of curled up my flower so it doesn't impede um, with this, um, the beads. There we go. And then I may need to pop that up just a little. I'm going to put a little bit of, so my beads aren't sticking to my dimensionals. I'm just kind of adding that powder. There we go. Fun. And then to finish this off, I want to add a little bit of my bling. So I'm going to, I think I'll just do one of these right in the center. And then I will take my... Wink of Stella, and I want to add a little bit of glimmer onto my flower and the stems. And then um, I forgot to do my sentiment, but um, you'll want to stamp that before you put that on um, your card. So I'll kind of fuss with that later. But what I had done on my original one is I had stamped the um, saying on there, and then I cut out the you are absolute, absolutely um, on white cardstock and then layered that on top of it. So, and then of course, you want to go ahead and coordinate the inside of your card, and I just did that soft succulent cardstock, um, and then the evening evergreen um, ink for my sentiment, and then the soft succulent for the um, flowers for tone on tone. So there you go. That is the waterfall um, shaker card. So I would love to see um, your creation. So go ahead and share them on my Stampin' uh, with the VIP Hounds and I will stamp with you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.